I'm going to show you three ways to do this. One is using Adobe Bridge, and the other two is Photoshop. I'm not going to show you a Lightroom method for this tutorial. Now, there's a couple things to keep into consideration here, and how the action is set up will affect how the batch processes. If you try this process and you find that it's not working perfectly, watch the second half of the video because it might call out those um, changes that you need to make to the action or whatever so as to get it to run properly. Okay, first one is in Adobe Bridge. Adobe Bridge comes through with Photoshop. So I've got my batch demo here. So I've got a group of images that I want to run that sepia tone on, right? So in Bridge, all you do is go to Tools, Photoshop, Batch. And then what it's going to do here is bring up your action selection. So I'm going to go Default, and then I'm going to go Sepia and Save. And I'll call out why I've got two different versions of this later on. Everything else I'm going to leave unchecked. For the destination, I want to go a folder and I'm going to choose a different folder than the one that has the original images in it. And then hit OK and you'll see in Photoshop here it's going to quickly run and process that action on all of these images. While it's processing those I'll just jump over to my batch results folder and you can see these all have that sepia tone process done to them. It looked terrible because the original images were processed in a different way, but you get the idea. This also comes in handy for perhaps doing a watermark. So that's the Adobe Bridge method. Now let's say you want to do this directly in Photoshop. So I'm going to delete all those because we don't need them. In Photoshop, you've got two different ways to do this. So when you launch Photoshop, the first one is go to File, Automate, Batch. And we can select that same action, but I'm going to show you a different action just for the sake of not showing the same one every time. This one, I'll choose Watermark MD, and you can see all of my options are the same. I'm going to choose my destination folder, which is going to be my batch results, and I'm going to hit OK. But you see here, this is one of those caveats that I was talking about. I In the action itself, I don't have a final step of saving the image. So what it's doing is it's asking me, well, do I want to save it as a JPEG? Well, this is going to be time consuming if I want to hit OK every time. So I'm going to cancel this, stop, and close. So in the action, what you want to do is to make sure you've got that final save as step. So notice in my sepia one, that last step is to save it. My watermark one, that last step is to merge visible. It's not called out to save it. So I'm gonna run the watermark on this. It adds the watermark like it's supposed to. It merged it into different layers, but I never saved it. So I'm just going to add one more step here and I'm going to, with watermark selected, I'm going to hit begin recording and I'm going to just do that last step of file, save as. I want to save it as a JPEG. Save. And notice we just got save as the last watermark step. So I'm going to stop it. Now we're going to go back into our batching. Automate batch. I'm going to select that watermark MD. In the batch results, we are getting those watermarked images. Let's say you've got an action like my first sepia one that does not have a stop at the end. It's okay because we can batch process this without adding that save step. So in essence, you can almost ignore everything I just said. That's our third method that we're going to show you for how to batch process. So we go to File, 
and instead of going to automate batch we're going to go scripts image processor now in scripts image processor the dialog looks a little bit different but it's the same you want to select your source folder and your destination folder and let me jump and delete everything in there now with this one we get a third step here a save as option so you can choose save as jpeg you can save it as a psd or as a tiff and this is going to add that save as step that we that i had just recorded into those other ones so notice i'm selecting my sepia one we know this one doesn't have a, the save step and i'm going to run it it's batch processing let's jump over to my batch results we've got that jpeg folder that is just created and notice they're all sepia toned so that's the three methods that you can use. Just keep in mind with those first two methods, you need to make sure to have a save at the end of your action. If you're using the third option, then you don't need to have a save at the end of your action. Caveat that I wanna call out is, now I've got, in my most used here, I've got an action, a fill flash action. And what this does is, I'm going to run it really quick and show you. So I'm just going to continue past that. And now notice what it has here is it has a stop in it where I want to actually use the brush tool and I want to paint some fill light in here. So I hit continue and it stops the process. And now I can do a little here. Let me increase my opacity so you see what I mean. So it's going to paint in some additional lighting so that I can use to fill in some of those shadows or whatever I want to fill in. That's one of the steps in the action. Well, let's say I want to run this as a batch. And you might be able to guess what's going to happen here when I do that. So we're still in Photoshop. It doesn't matter. Once again, you can use any one of the three methods. I'm going to go batch. In my most used, I've got my digital fill flash. I'm not changing anything else. And I'm going to run it. And notice, I get to my continue, start painting where I want light, but it gives me, now it's taking me directly to that save dialog. It, it's not giving me the option of doing that paint. And then it's gonna do the same thing again. So there are some caveats in regards to actions. And this makes sense because if you think about it, if you're using a brush to paint on a specific area, it, it's not gonna know what areas you want that painted on, right? So that action, batching that particular type of an action won't work. You need to batch actions that are doing an overall change to an image such as changing uh, the processing like the sepia tone. Okay, so there are some things to keep in mind when batching, and that might have to do with, say, sizes of stuff. Uh, so and let's say I wanted to add maybe like a little watermark down in the lower corner. So let's record that action. So I'm gonna hit stop. Okay, now I want to batch process this on multiple image. I'm gonna go File, Automate, Batch. I wanna make sure to hit this Override Action Save As command, so I'll check it. So you'll see this is why we needed to do that Save As command. So I'm gonna hit OK. And let's see what happens here. So notice what it did here with the, with the watermark and this is where you need to be cautious sometimes with these batch save as because this image is a different size than that first image. And so that's why it's placing it in a slightly different location. So just a little uh, thing to keep in mind when batch processing stuff. And again, kind of off to the side a little bit versus in the lower corner where it was on that original one because that image is a different size than this the original one. So that's something to keep in mind if you're doing things like this where you're placing one thing on top of another. It is possible to do, but um, you might have an issue. Other things that you might experience is if you're using brushes because you can't batch 
a brush stroke, for example. So what you can do is you record hitting the brush and then you have a stop and it'll give you the option of painting and then keep going. So I'll show you with one of my um, most used actions here. So for example, I've got this um, fill flash option. So I'm gonna hit play and oh, I kind of skipped past it really quickly there, but it said start painting where you see light. And so it stops on this brush so that, that way I can then start painting with it. And it's gonna use my default brush opacity and flow. So something to keep in mind with that. If I hit vignette, notice same thing. It's gonna continue, but it's gonna give me the option of adjusting my vignette where I want. And so in that logo example, you'll need to make sure to have it stop for a moment and then edit that and then hit enter. And what it'll do is it'll then take you to the next stage of whatever the actions are. Let me expand that action here so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see here, we've got this stop in here. So you can record that, you can record a stop where it gives you an option. And that's just gonna be here in that you've got this stop playing recording. And then when you go and hit record again, you wanna make sure that you're picking up in the action process flow of where you want it to pick up at. So hopefully that last little bit makes sense.